Okay, call the meeting to order. This is a Waitley Select Board meeting of May 12th, 2021. First item on the agenda is uh, approval of meeting minutes of April 26th, 2021. Any comments? I have no comments. I would move to approve the minutes as written. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. Okay, vendor and payroll warrants. I signed them earlier and you should have seen them in your packet. Any uh, comments? No comments for me. Fine by me. Okay, look fine for me. Okay, moving on. Uh, public comment. Uh, this is open to anybody in the public uh, that wants to uh, discuss anything that's not related to items on the agenda. We've got a full agenda and, and a lot of stuff. So anybody has anything else they want to talk about? It's time to bring it up right now. Just would that be, we'll be talking about the water later on, not yes. at this point. Yes, we will, David, yes. That's David, yeah. <laughs> Brian, you had something? No, just uh, I'm waiting also to discuss the water issues uh, that uh, we have at Pine Plains. Okay. Yes, that's on our agenda. Uh, well, later on, it may be at least half hour or so before we get to it. Okay. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Okay. Uh, moving on, I'd like to now call to order a public meeting, public hearing for mosquito spraying uh, opt-out program that's being offered by the state under uh, Mass General Laws, Chapter 252, Section, Paragraph 2A for calendar year 2021. I'd like to open the public hearing. Anybody has comments? Uh, maybe Fran, do you wanna start off by telling us what this is about and what action we need to take? Yes, uh, this is uh, a option for towns to um, opt out of the state's mosquito spraying program. Um, as you know, this has been a sort of contested issue ever since it appeared as a bill sponsored by the governor. There was no opt out provision and then state legislators, et cetera, um, voted to include an opt out provision. However, the state chose not to give any um, ed guidance as to what might be required for opting out and they still haven't, but they did provide a procedure uh, to do it, which is basically the short application that I sent. And they're mostly looking for a, um, uh, a thorough public education component. And that is the only piece that's required according to the guidelines. Um, we have uh, gotten an extension. Actually, we lobbied to get a two month extension. We got two weeks instead, but nothing else has changed really. So I think the application can be voted on tonight. It has to be a certified vote. Um, if you got agree with it, basically the opt-out required Board of Health cons consult, but it's really a select board or, and or mayor decision. So um, my role and the role of Board of Health is really to uh, help you and advise. And we actually <laughs> obviously consulted big time by putting together a proposal for the alternative mosquito control, mosquito management plan, which is required. And that's basically it in a nutshell. Okay, does anybody have any questions, comments? I, I, Fred, I'll, I'll, I'll just maybe <laughs> Pick up the pace of the of the conversation a little bit and say yeah. I think we should heed the advice of our board of health. That's why we have them. Um, we have a pretty consistent standard here on this board that we 
and, and unless we hear something egregious, we we abide by what what they say. It's it's no different than listening to Keith uh, or someone else. Yeah, yeah. And by way of background, uh, there is a 21st century mosquito management task force that's part of this legislation that will be reviewing all of the past practices of this mosquito control board and revising them, hopefully with uh, an eye towards more um, integrated pest management uh, steps, et cetera. So that spraying is not one of their quickie options. For, for, so okay. stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the public hearing, the portion of this, anybody else have comments? Okay, I'll close the public hearing and we need to take an action. Impact us at all at this stage. Mm -hmm. uh, I get a motion to, I guess I'll make a motion that we what? Do not participate in this program that we opt out. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion on the board? No, okay, we'll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Aye. Fred, yes. Okay. Yep. So, so Fran and Becky, does this mean you guys are gonna take care of the, the pending cicada problem as well? <laughs> Any other problem you want? <laughs> we, we get a lot of calls on that. Because they're coming out of the they're coming out of the ground now. I hear. Yeah. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. First, first we'll deal with ticks. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have your priorities. It's okay. That's right. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, so the you have to submit this um, application, obviously, and it's already with a signature within. The next two weeks basically mm -hmm. okay. along with the certification of the vote which should be easy okay no problem we can do that in the next uh, two weeks for sure <clears throat> okay moving on our agenda next uh thank you thanks so much thanks okay thanks, thanks you guys back to dinner oops <laughs> next item or we're a little early, but uh, I think we can talk about it here is uh, Chris Carney of uh, Levesque Associates wants, is here to discuss a waiver request for driveway regulations, parcel of land located on State Road, Sessors Map 5, parcel 29. So, so Fred, if I, I just wanna ask the board to discuss an issue before they actually get into the application. Um, and that is the question of whether the board has uh, jurisdiction over the application. Um, so I had just sent to you, uh, I just sent to the board an opinion of town council that says that the, the driveway regulations, which are select board regulations, are only applicable on town roads. Um, and so you could see that decision in your packet. Obviously, it's, it's the decision of the board as to whether it, it wants to um, claim jurisdiction over the matter. But the opinion of counsel is that is that because because state road is a is a state maintained um, state maintained and, and state controlled road that the select board regulations would not apply. So, um, if you want to hear about the project and the application, that's it's within the discretion of the board to do so. Um, but I just wanted to make you guys aware of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I did see your uh, the the ruling that came from our uh, town council, Brian. I did I did see that. Uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm familiar with 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 the project from from other committees that I'm on. Uh, I don't know if I'll ask uh, Joyce or or Jonathan want to hear any more about the project, or you you want, or should we move on? Um, I had one question to ask. Um, if we say, hey, this is not our jurisdiction, where does that leave these folks on their project? Does that leave them in limbo and they can't move forward with whatever permits they need? Or is that basically by taking that um, opinion uh, or taking that position, would we be basically 
that's like the next hurdle they're over. And then they, they may still have other hurdles that are unrelated to the driveway, but um, I, I just don't have a good sense of, of what are the consequences of this decision about over jurisdiction. So, so my, under, my understanding is, is that, is that they were, um, they were referred by the planning board to the select board when they were in front of the planning board for site plan approval um, in it, that okay. was so this might be one board. so yeah. so this I, I might don't be think it steps. puts them anywhere right so it's, it's maybe sends them back to the planning board um and that driveway issue was resolved as far as the planning board is concerned they may have other issues that have nothing to do with us but this is really it, like this is one small part of a bigger project and yeah and i would ask i would probably uh, ask the applicants if, if what i said was correct because <laughs> they were in the room i wasn't uh, yeah, we're aware of the driveway permit outside of zoning uh, and in bylaws and regulations. So we're here in front of the select board to make sure that we ask for waivers when appropriate and fulfill all the other conditions required for the driveway access permit completely. And to add to that, Chris, is that the state we have to we have to apply to the state as well. So if you decide that you don't have jurisdiction, we, we still have to submit to the state. So there is, they do have jurisdiction and they will have to grant us a driveway permit. Mm -hmm. As yeah, so part of this project, we will submit the mass DOT for a, a curve. Mm -hmm. Just that they're coming back. Okay. I, I guess I have two questions and, and one just came up because of what, what, what Todd referenced. Um, Will the state, and maybe no one has answers to this, will the state look at the types of regulations or policy that the town has as a as a guiding light, or won't they care? And I'm just curious, it, you know. Mass DOT will be primarily focused on their own policy. I'm sorry, Chris, I didn't understand. Mass DOT will be focused on their own policies and not your local policy. Okay, so they won't. Okay. And so my other question would be other waiver requests like this. Do we have any historical record in terms of precedent? Or is this sort of a change in approach? Or don't we know? Maybe Keith knows. I, I don't know. Yeah, Jonathan, I can chime in here. This is the first time that this has ever surfaced um, from the planning board um, questioning it. Um, there has been many buildings since this went into effect in 1991 that have been built on Route 5 and 10. And every time someone has come forward to me, you know, when it comes to a to building permit, I tell them I don't need, I have no jurisdiction on a state highway. And um, so our driveway permit regulations have never applied um, in this case here, the, the, as I said, the planning board questioned it and sent it to me. And so that when I was contacted, I said that I didn't think it applied. And so that's when talking with Todd and Brian and myself, that's, that's how we all ended up here. Okay. 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 And another thing, no, the other thing is there's no way I would even have any idea if any other buildings that have been built on five and 10 don't meet our regulations. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. And there has been other buildings built recently. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I would move that we, um, we, uh, take an opinion that this is not our jurisdiction, as our council has advised, um, and we can be we can be done with this item and let these folks get on with the rest of their their things they need to do. I'll second that. Okay, I'll take a roll call vote. Joyce, aye. Jonathan, yes. Fred, yes. Okay, moving on. Uh, the next hey, item hey, was was hey, Fred. Order. Thank you, all. Brian. Can I? Can we wait till six thirty and talk about something else in the meantime? Yeah, I just wanted to let the applicants know that that I'll 
that I'll send a communication to the planning board letting them know about the board's decision. <laughs> and as a point of clarification, no driveway permit will be required from the town. Correct. Right. Right. Thank you very much for your time. All right, thanks. Thank you all. Thanks very much. Thanks. Great Thank night. Yeah, I'd like to say wait till 6.30 in case other people want to come on. That's on our agenda to talk about the water commissioner's uh, projects going on. Uh, Brian, what should we go to the COVID emergency issues or you rather do something else? I'm thinking if anybody's here that for future stuff that might want to go have dinner. Jim, are you going to stay on, or do you want to talk about more of Who are you? Oh, yeah, Mom, that'll be a fast item. Why don't we do that so Jim can be on his way? Well, we like Jim here. Which which item are we going to talk about? Memorial, Memorial Day? Day? Memorial yeah. Day. <clears throat> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, under old business, there's... Uh, discuss the proposed plan for a limited Memorial Day celebration on Monday, May 31st, which is actually Memorial Day. It's observed this year. And I, I guess uh, Jim Ross has uh, made a proposal to the Board of Health and I guess to, to the select board and wants some uh, agreement or that what he's proposing is, would be acceptable to the town. Uh, okay, Jim, do you wanna discuss further what you're proposing? Okay, uh, post 3295 is just requesting a very brief Memorial Day ceremony on um, Monday, the last day of the month, at uh, on or about noontime. <clears throat> um, it's going to consist of six members of our honor guard, our commander, and, um, and Ruth Leahy was going to play taps. We will assemble in front of the town hall in a single column with social distancing in mind. The commander um, will say a couple of brief words, maybe one or two minutes. She will turn it over to the honor guard commander who will be Raymond Belial for this one. And he will call for a three shot volley and we will immediately turn to Ruth Leahy, she will play taps. Uh, it will be turned back to the commander and she will ask that the flag be raised to full staff and that will be me. So this whole ceremony probably will take maybe 15 minutes, maybe less. Um, and that that's it, unfortunately, we can't do any more. Um, I did not want them assembling on the veterans area because there's construction going on. Chief actually made a preparation for the Goshen Stone Wall today. So we want to keep everybody off of there. So that's that's the proposal. Um, I wish it was more, but um, unfortunately we can't do that this year. Okay, so this is open to the public? Yes, it is. <clears throat> and uh, 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 sorry, you said that the time that would be at what time, 11? We expect it to start probably about quarter to 12, Fred. Okay. In the afternoon. This all depends on how soon they get done in Deerfield. Um, that's, so I'm, my best guess is right about midday. Jim, are they doing the same thing in, uh, in Deerfield, about, about the same thing? Just about the same thing, John. Uh, they do uh, three, three cemeteries uh, plus Laurel Hill. So it's the same thing, and as well as in, in um, Sunderland. We meet at the cemetery, and, um, and, and that's it. There's no marching. Can, no marching. Can we get FCAT to cover it? Excuse me? Can we get FCAT to cover it? Can we? I, I don't understand. Can we get the, the cable access station to cover I, it? I have not people? asked for them, but they certainly could do that. It would be a nice idea if I did that. I, I just think since it's, it's going to be limited capacity from the town, from the public, yeah. for obvious reasons, they can watch it on, on FCAT. Okay, I'll, I'll contact FCAT, see if they'll cover it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and this is agreeable to the uh, to the Board of Health. Uh, Fran is, is gone. Rebecca, did you have anything to comment on it? No, it sounds like good, good policy. Mm -hmm. 
I would, um, I, I don't know exactly what we need to move to vote for, but I would move that we let this go forward. It sounds like they've done all their due diligence and um, if whatever support they need from us is a vote of, I don't know, vote of confidence in their plan. Um, not sure what exactly to move. Maybe Brian will give me some words to move something here. Um, I don't necessarily, I, I guess the short answer is I, I don't think there's anything to, to move. Um, I think okay. they just wanted to know that the Board of Health and, and Select Board were, were on board with this happening. Okay. okay. Well, I, I don't have any problem with what's being proposed. Joyce, do you agreeable, I guess? Jonathan? Absolutely. Okay, so Jim, you can go ahead and uh, propose, uh, uh, implement what you're proposing. And, and I would hope somewhere we could put it on our website, Brian, either a community activity or something, let people know where something is going on. So, so I guess that, that's the question it is, is, do you want it advertised? Well, I got to say, I, advertising it makes me nervous because it's a slippery slope where everyone's going to want to gather for a variety of, I, I don't know, I, I just, I, I would be nervous about advertising unless someone can give me a very good reason why I shouldn't be. Well, unless we, we, we say, assuming Jim gets FCAT to video it, to just tell people there's going to be a brief ceremony. It's going to be uh, mm -hmm. videoed by FCAT. Uh, and you're welcome to look at it at FCAT. Where, yeah, I, I agree with, with, with that. Yeah, advertise that it's going to be on FCAT, but right. you can't police the social distancing if, if crowds show up. There's just, it, and it's not fair to, to, to Jim and his crew to ask them yeah. to police that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, Jim, uh, you the veterans know about this. Yes. So those are, I think, those are the people for whom attending might be the most important. And um, I mean, I would go to show my respects, but if I'm going to be a problem, I'm not going to go, and I'll watch it on FCAT. So I'm I'm happy to to let that be my way of uh, of of celebrating and acknowledging Memorial Day. Thank you. Okay, so Brian. Uh, Make a note that it will be videoed on FCAT and people are encouraged to look at it there rather than, I guess, come to the actual ceremony. Thank you, fellas. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay, Jim. Jim. Okay. Uh, we've got a few minutes yet. Brian, would it be appropriate to discuss the half staff? Right now, I noticed in your notes that you had other things. Yeah, um, we, I, I think if the board's all right, we, we can talk about that. Sure. Um, what, was, what was that item you're saying? Under town administrator updates, there there's, uh, there's um, an issue about raising, lowering the flags. Oh, okay. So uh, for the past decade or so, Alan Thackeray and I have taken care of all the half staff notifications. Alan puts them down and I put them up and we're happy to do that. We also do the same in Deerfield. We have another member that does it in Deerfield. But times have changed. Alan now has a motor home and he's traveling throughout the summer so I can't rely on Alan to do it. Um, I've had some other issues in my life and I can't do seven flags anymore. We used to do the Veterans Memorial, fire station, the police station, the center school, the town offices, um, up and down. And so now I have discussed this with John Hannum and the chief of police, and they can handle their own. I talked to Brian about the the Waitley Center, the offices, um, and you guys, you get the staff staff notifications through the state events. Uh, we will continue to take care of the Veterans Memorial. That we will absolutely do. It. I'll do it both up and down if I have to. So uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that we've enjoyed doing this over the years, but you know things change, <laughs> and uh, we're on. Un I'm unable to do up and down seven times every time there's a half staff. So uh, 
but we certainly can do the Veterans Memorial. Okay. okay. Is that agreeable to everybody? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, agreeable in the sense that yes, thank you very much for much doing this. Yeah. But does that mean that the we need to sort out something for? It sounds like four locations. We need to have somebody else who can can do that. The fire department will do their own. Uh huh. If the police, fire police is going to do his own. Veterans. Okay. We stopped doing the center school a few months ago because the flag was in deplorable condition. Okay. We notified the post office, and that's really a federal issue. We just did it to be good neighbors, and I've notified okay. them. Oh, okay. I notified Brian on the town offices. So it's all covered, Joyce. I will okay. take we'll take care of the Veterans Memorial for sure. Jim, what about Hurley? Excuse me? What about Hurley Field? We never did that, John. That wasn't we part did. of our okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So we just need to have someone do the flag at the town offices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, find find someone who can do that. And we're notified. Sure. OK. Yeah. The, if they just log into the state house events, it's an automatic email when it comes out. The governor sends an email out and you just uh, comply with it. That's all. OK. And, and does the school do their own thing, too? Yes, they do their own. Yeah. And how about the library? Uh, the librarian does her own. Does her own. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, appreciate you. your efforts in doing this for us in the past and, and, and for you to continue doing the one at the Veterans Memorial, Jim. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. It takes care of me. Is that right, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Good to be with everybody. Thank you will, okay. Jim. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, let's go back to our uh, agenda here for our, our 6.30 scheduled appointment. It was with the Whateley Water Commissioners to provide a status update on the water merger in the center of town and uh, talk about future capital projects. Uh, Brad, I got, I got a text from Wayne at 6.24. I said he'll be on in 10 minutes. So probably another four or five minutes till he'll be on. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you want to wait. Okay, I'll, I'll wait. Uh, you want to talk about the town hall storage shed? There was under administrator updates. Yeah, I don't have a lot to say. Uh, Keith uh, did some of the prep work in the back there um, in preparation for, you know, for the shed to be uh, go back there. Oh, points here now. I don't know if Keith wants to add anything to that. I mean, the only thing I can add is that, yeah, the, the work is done. I, I spoke to Neil today and um, that it should be coming in fairly soon. They were waiting for the ground to firm up a little bit from the heavy rain we had over the last few weeks. So should be there fairly soon, I would assume. Okay, so this is this is a shed that's already built. It's just going to be delivered there and put on the site. Correct. Okay, and this will be under whose control? It's going to be it's going to be the historical society shed. Historical this is, society. Uh, you know, this is a conversation. I don't remember much from from pre COVID times, but it was a conversation that we had. Repeatedly, we had oh, yeah. a lot of conversations we about it. Spent more time on this than anybody needs to spend on a storage shed. So, <laughs> okay, okay, okay we're here. done with that. So, uh, okay, getting back to our uh, water commissioners here. I guess Wayne is the only one I see on. Uh, Wayne, could you provide us a status on the update of the water merger project. All right, Brian probably know better where the easement stands, but the nope. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I know, I know what you know. <laughs> That's in the works, I guess. The we're on the planning board's agenda for it. I think it's the twenty fifth, and then back on the ZBA for the seventh. 
we're hoping to have drawings of an architect's drawings of the buildings by the end of this week. We worked, we got the input from the cemetery commissioners and the historical commission and we made some changes. I'll send them to those two committees to see if they like those now. The skid unit, the pumps are out to bids. Those are due, I think, the 24th maybe of May, I think. So we should know by the end of May which pumps are coming and if we can get all the other permitting and stuff done. I would say middle of June, beginning of June, we should be able to start building. Okay. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Wayne on, on the water merger project before we move on? Well, I, I guess my question goes back and it's not on the, on the capital side or on the construction side that Wayne was talking about, but I'm going to stick my hand in the hornet's nest and, <clears throat> and encourage a conversation that we had back when we started discussing this, the, 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 the logistics about um, helping people who don't have the financial capacity to pony up $5,000 right away for the hookup fees. We spent, I don't know how many meetings talking about different financial scenarios, one of which was for, for the water district to, to, to use some of its proceeds um, to, to help subsidize costs. Others were to use a funding formula, um, CDBG, or even, even something that's, that's used typically at the school for, for free and reduced school lunches um, to help people um, perhaps defer the, court, the, the cost, um, delay, whatever it is, set up a payment plan through water bills, um, so that, and again, I don't know how many people this is in town, but it just strikes me that this conversation has once again been kicked down, kicked, kicked down the road. And again, people on this call would know better than me the, the financial situations of some of the people on, on the, the current district water system. But what are we doing? We, we discussed this. We all agreed that this was what was going to happen and, and, and how the process needed to go forward. So we were all happy together. And it doesn't seem like anything's happening. Well, we, we, never, we never talked to, uh, about how we were going to proceed. There was some discussion of, of the options, like you mentioned, but this board has never agreed that we're going to proceed or, or pursue any of the options. I would, I would respectfully disagree with that statement. I think we did come to a, 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 an agreement Call it a handshake agreement. I, I, I don't know what, what how, how official the agreement was, but we all agreed that this was the process that we wanted to take because we all agreed that the merger had to happen. There were people who potentially could demonstrate financial hardship and it was incumbent upon us to help that, help those people out. Okay, but, okay, I, uh, yeah, I, but I, I agree I think with, Oh, and what what you you just said, but we never pursued it any further as to how we were going to help them. And I think there was it was kind of left up to to our town administration and and the water commissioners deciding how that could best be handled. And that that's where it ended, I, I, as far as I know. Well, we're not. I'm not saying that we shouldn't help them and that we shouldn't look at. It. Some, some method of helping them. No, we, we should do that, yes. And I think I agree with you, that it should happen, but we haven't decided any of that. And, and maybe it's a time for the water commissioners to, to uh, present something to the town as to how we should proceed with it. 
Joyce, what were you going to say? I'm not sure that my, uh, my recollection and Fred's is the same, but that's okay. Well, I, I feel like we were all on board with trying to figure out a good way to help people. But at the time, we didn't necessarily know how. And right. we never really gave anybody a direction like, you go figure out how we're going to do it now. Um, that kind of never happened. So it's, I, I think we, we did have a general agreement that this should be done and without actually delegating it to any individual or group to make it happen. Okay, we didn't charge anybody with, you know, water commissioners, make it happen. Um, but that said, they also, that, that should come with some resources. And I, my understanding is that one of the things that we are looking at now is that we may have some uh, federal money coming in and we started, uh, this came, came up late in another meeting and I was really uncomfortable with talking about it without it being on the agenda. Today it's on the agenda. So maybe one of the things we can talk about um, is, you know, if, if honestly, if you had given me the job of figuring out how to do it, I'd have to come back and say, I can't do it unless you give me some money. So maybe we could steer the conversation toward um, wh what uh, we want to do for water infrastructure with federal money that we may be getting and, and just, or at least listen to the ideas that the water commissioners and other people have regarding what kind of improvements to what does our water system need? And it sounds like this is one of them, right? One of the things we could use money for is to help with these hookups, but I know there are other things too. So it's okay to kind of turn the subject away from pointing fingers at who might be to blame for not having a plan here no. to the, the idea of let's, let's talk about what kind of improvements if we are so lucky as to get this money that looks like it's coming our way. What could we do with that in, in the water system? We don't have to make a decision tonight, but to just really learn what, uh, what we ought to be thinking about for improving the water system. Yeah, and, and Joyce, I, I wasn't pointing any fingers. I was just saying that we, we seem to have let this go by the wayside collectively. Yeah. Um, I, I, you mm -hmm. know, I, I know we talked about at the very least setting up, creating, creating um, payment plans for people who needed payment plans um, because that is easily billed through, through water bills. Um, so they're not having to come up with $5,000 all, all in one lump sum. Um, I, I just, I, I wanna make sure that we take advantage of this opportunity where we're talking about improvements to the water system overall, about, about how to enhance the water delivery and quality of people across town uh, and, and make sure that we don't silo this and that, that we remember yeah. that we are all one community as opposed to a bunch of neighborhoods. Okay, uh, if we want to bring it in as part of the uh, infrastructure project, I, I guess we, we can certainly do that. And there's other parts of the infrastructure pro projects that I guess I've alluded to uh, other other meetings and looking at the, the guidelines for the, I, I guess it comes under the what, one step, one stop for growth program. Uh, it's where it would be submitted. Uh, there's more specifics that we need to address for a uh, infrastructure project rather than just uh, saying we're expanding the system, I think. Brian, is that true? Is that how we should be looking at this? Uh, well, uh, I think we're starting to, to mix two different related but separate um, ideas here. Hmm. Um, possibly three of them. But um, so, so there's the issue of of, of financial support um, um, for the water merger project. Then there's the issue of, of you know, other improvements to the water system that, that, that um, could be made. Um, and so the, so the issue is, one of the issues is funding uh, the American Rescue Plan Act money um, would be one source of funding for for maybe both of those both of those issues um, and um, the other funding source for for future improvements to the 
uh, to the water system could also be the uh, the one stop for growth program. Um, I know we're going to talk about that a little bit later. We didn't get great feedback um, from the state in terms of in terms of the grant programs are really looking for for the state grant money to um, really leverage private investment um, and economic development. So that's the case we would have to make to make our grant application competitive. Um, and they're really looking for, for some imminent, um, you know, development that's, that, that's going to take place. Um, so let's go back to, uh, to where we started. And that is, that is the, the center of town. Um, and yeah, there, it, my recollection is, is that there, is that there were a lot of discussions about, about how we were going to, or, or what the possibilities were for, for helping people out. Um, and, you know, so we have, we have really two boards that are at play here. One is the select board and one is the, is the, the board of water commissioners, both are elected. Um, and the water commissioners that have custody and control over the water system. So um, they make decisions in terms of hookup fees, water rates, you know, really how the system's managed. Um, so really I, my opinion is that the, this, um, how the select board plays into it is, is um, one of the, so one of the issues we were struggling with, I think is where was the money coming from? Um, if you're gonna do a payment plan and we have to make, uh, and we're planning on making a payment within one year, well, somebody needs to, for lack of a better term, front the money. Um, and where was that coming from? Um, so that was, that was a, another sort of sticking point. Um, it, it definitely, it, it's worth investigating whether the ARPA funds are, are something that we could um, really either, either subsidize or, or help us make the payment plans work. Or um, I suspect there's, there could even be a, a, a grant component based on income um, in terms of carbon, uh, COVID, COVID um, hardships, financial hardships related to COVID. So um, that's my thought, Wayne. I don't know if the if the water commissioners had any recent discussions about hardships and and, and what what they're possibly willing to do. No, we're going to do that. <clears throat> we're waiting. At the end of this month, we'll have a meeting, and I, that's one of the things that'll be on the agenda. When, when does, when do these decisions have to be made by? When's D-Day? A year from when we start, right, Ryan? From whenever we borrow the money, it's due. Or I guess, I guess we're looking at when the connection gets made. I guess you can say when the water gets turned on, when Nicholas's gets switched off and the town system gets switched on. So maybe, I don't know, what do you think, Nicholas? If I mean, if we can start, if we can start the middle of June, maybe September, October? That's what I've been hoping for. Yeah. Wow. And so, Brian, what are the deadlines for applying for some of these grants? There's one coming up June 4th, I see, right? For the one stop for growth grant, um, yeah, the infrastructure grant would be would be due June fourth. Um, I, I I guess I wasn't thinking that that would be something that that we would try to replace um, the center of town money with. Um, I was thinking it may be for for other improvements to the water system. Um, okay. Right, but so, so for the center of town, what 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 other deadlines that we're talking about for these grants, other than the, the one stop for growth? Do we know? Um, I don't know that we have any grant applications for the center of town. It was going to be funded through a combination of of town capital funds that have been appropriated, which is another discussion about possibly replacing the the funds from general stabilization and using the ARPA funds. So we can put that almost $90,000 back into our general stabilization account. 
Um, and then the rest was going to be paid through the hookup fees. Okay. So right now, should we focus on the, the one stop for growth for the deadline for improvements? For which improvements are you talking about? Well, for the for extensions on, on Egypt Road and Swamp Road and and possibly addressing the water quality issues in Pine Plains Estates? I, I think that's I think that's a um, a discussion that the board can have as to there were five projects that were submitted and um, and based on the feedback, I think we should go with the ones that are that are most competitive. But um, and that was something I, I had on the agenda. We could talk about a little bit later, um, but it's but we can. I guess that's my comment. Is that is that I think we should look at the five projects that were submitted and figure out what, what the board wants to pursue. Okay, so you want to leave that for later on our meeting? It, it's, it's uh, I guess, whatever the board wants to do. I, I think they're related, but they're, they're two separate discussions, the, the water merger and the center of town, and then the what other water improvements there are. Okay, okay. okay. well, since we, we've we got, uh, uh, other people on our on our meeting tonight. I, I think most of these are from Pine Plains Estates. Uh, if uh, I hear that there is issues, concerns with with the uh, water quality in Pine Plains Estates, and these people are coming to our meeting to, I guess, speak up and and try to uh, maybe help us understand. What the issues are, concerns, what maybe we could we could do. I don't know if Wayne has probably talked to many of these people. Uh, what what's been transpired and, and how can we correct this situation? Uh, I don't know who's speaking for Pine Plains, David. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll let you uh, uh, speak. Well. Good evening. Um, my name is Dave Theoharides, and uh, good evening and uh, welcome. Um, I guess I'm saying welcome. Thank you for letting us be here tonight. Anyway, I live on Francis Way in Waitley, and I'm one of the ma three managers of the Pine Plains Lot Owners Association. That also includes Aaron Bailey and Amy Altadonna, who just had to leave to go to graduation. At the request of uh, Fred Orlowski, we surveyed the members of our uh, Lot Owners Association, asking them if they were still getting odors from their water or staining. Aaron sent a copy of the responses that we received from the different lot owners to uh, Brian and Fred, along with uh, uh, Wayne. I think you all would have got a copy of that. And we would ask that that could be included in the minutes going forward. Um, of those that, that responded on our survey, we found several of them mentioning periodic sulfur smells that were in the water. It wasn't all the time, it was periodic. Um, we we also uh, heard that several of them were getting a red staining in the sink, uh, mostly around the drains and also at the water line of the bowl of the toilet versus inside the tank. Um, the sulfur smell, some people said, seems to come mostly from the cold water um, and it only is periodic. It is mostly in bathrooms. It is not in the kitchen sink. And uh, I see people nodding here. It's a, you know, pretty much all the way around here, we, we've narrowed it down. Several of the people have gone ahead and put in quite costly water filtration systems. Uh, the carbon filtering being the biggest one that would help with the sulfur. We all realize that uh, Waitley has very hard water. And that is not an issue that we're here tonight to talk about. That is something that if someone wants to put a water softener in, they can. And, and I did go ahead and do that. And that took care of problems with uh, the faucets clogging up and appliances and so on. The big issue is the, the sulfur smell that periodically comes about and the staining. Um, we have several people that turn around and will only use bottled water for drinking. And I think that's kind of crazy, you know, considering that you paid a hookup fee and you're hoping that the water's safe. There are people that will not let their children drink the water. And that concern, you know, uh, 
has come about and people have you know talked about what can be done. I would like to commend the board and Wayne and his commissioners for mitigating the manganese problem. When we first moved in here, the manganese problem was horrible. Uh, I would open up the tank on the toilet and there would be a black film in there. The whole inside of the tank would be a black slime on there. And since you folks have put that in, it's done a great job uh, removing that problem. And we kind of thought that, well, maybe that would eventually take care of the periodic sulfur smell. But there's nothing as bad as turning the water on first thing in the morning in the bathroom to brush your teeth and the smell of rotten eggs just comes up around your face and you say, do I really want to put this in my mouth right now? And we're hoping that, uh, you know, something can be done. Um, we've heard that the smell was a result of, I think Wayne had told me once, he came out to my house a couple of times and I appreciate that. You know, and there were a lot of theories and I, you know, one of the theories was that, um, that the water was stagnant in the pipe that ended on Egypt Road at the tracks and that the pipe was too big, I think he told me. And, and consequently the water sits there and it gets stagnant and maybe that's where the sulfur smell was coming. But we also heard that it could be uh, an iron bacteria that was anaerobically producing some sort of gas that was coming out and so on. And I think what a lot of the lot owners wanted to know was what is it? You know, what is exactly causing that sulfur smell? And is it safe to drink? You know, and you wondered if it would be possible through your grants or whatever to get some expert scientific analysis that would just say, yeah, folks, the water is okay to drink, okay? Uh, the sulfur smell is coming because of this. And if you do this, you know, that will take care of it. I mean, one of our lot owners uh, researched and contacted a company in Colorado and spent a fortune. He spent $20,000 putting in a water filtration system and he still gets sulfur smells. And it's, you know, and it just seems a little crazy that it would be like that. So anyway, I'm speaking just kind of on my, on my own, but there are some other people here that may want to speak up. But uh, again, we appreciate all the work that you do. And we just hope that maybe going forward, we can come up with a solution that will solve this problem. And, it, and what I've heard is not just Pine Plains, it's pretty much the whole uh, Long Plains Road uh, from Christian over to us that seems to be getting that problem too. So thank you. Okay, thank you, David. Uh, anybody else in Pine Plains? I guess Pam, what, McDaniel? Do you wish to make any comments? David covered it brilliantly. That's exactly it. The cold water in our bathroom, we can't drink it. We have to pour a glass of water from the hot water faucet before it gets too hot so we can brush our teeth. That's just the way it's been since we moved in there and it's a brand new house. And I'm Rebecca. Uh, the smell is so is not in any room, not in the kitchen, not in the other bathrooms, not in the basement bathroom, just the master bathroom, just the cold water. And I think that's what threw me because I figured I'd had a house before that had the sulfur smell and you could smell it in different places. But here it's just the one room and it's extremely strong. It isn't just mild though, is that just kind of smell? Once it's turned on, we both look at each other and the other and went, oh, forgot and shoved the water off so because we don't smells, run the cold water. It smells up the whole bathroom. Yeah, but, it's strong, that's all, and it was scary. But we thought it was a building flaw until we saw the Pine Plains. Yes, thank you, David. Thank and, you, David, for bringing this to our attention that it's a community-wide problem. So and should we be sending water off for testing or is this so common that you are aware <laughs> that it it's just something typical that happens in several cases? Right. But, you know, for the cost of water, <laughs> should we not be allowed to use our cold water in our bathroom? <laughs> Wayne, do you want to comment on the testing? What's been done or not done or what? Yeah, we, we do test and we have... In the past month, I contacted, I've been talking with a water quality specialist. So we're, we've been going down, we took some samples out of the mains down by Pine Plains, Pine Plains, some down on the southern end of State Road and the southern end of River Road. I'm actually, I'm just waiting for those results back. It seems to be more of that it's what I'm being told 
before we get all these results back. But from what I'm being told, it is because of an iron bacteria and who I've talked to have seen it in a lot of towns and it, it seems to gravitate or grow more on the PEX pipe in your indoor plumbing than it does if you have copper pipe. And it seems like one fix from what I'm being told would be to up the residual of chlorine in the water, which would mean, I mean, we wouldn't want to up it here because then, which is the difficult thing because then most of the town will now, when they open their faucets is going to smell nothing but chlorine. So, I mean, one thing we are looking into is put in, call it a chlorine booster station somewhere down on the Eastern part of the town to just up the chlorine residual for the farther ends of the mains where you guys live to try solving it that way. Does tying in the line on by the railroad tracks, does that have any potential solution to this? It will help. I mean, any, any time you can close a loop, it's going to make the water quality better. Cause I know, I know the Southern end of route five has the same issue. So yeah, anytime you can get rid of dead ends on mains and make loops out of them, it's gonna improve the water quality more. Can you raise your hand or something? Okay. Brian, did we actually get letters that David is saying he sent to us? I don't remember seeing any. I'd have to go back and, and look. Um, I mean, I don't remember, but maybe there were. Uh, Aaron Bailey sent the... Uh survey results to you today. Today? Okay. Yeah. Well, you would have got a two. Right. So I'm, so I apologize. I'm not on video. This is Jerry Lemon. I'm also a resident at Pine Plains Estates. Okay. I just wanted to relay some of what I was probably in that letter from Aaron. We moved in here back in August. I invested money with a Culligan system to put in both a carbon filter and a water conditioner because we saw the hard spots on glass, uh, on uh, some of the uh, filters, et cetera. Uh, the most recent test after installing and spending the money on the Culligan system, for which was about three, $4,000. One, there's no iron in the water that they were able to find. So that was good news. But even after using a water conditioner, the hardness scale was still an eight on a scale of one to 10. That's considered very high. And importantly, the total dissolved solids, which a carbon filter should address, were at 197. Typically 50 to 100, zero to 50 is ideal. According to Culligan, 50 to 100 indicates there's fibers present. 100 to 200 is considered hard. And where we were at 197 is considered, quote, marginally acceptable. And so maybe it's, you know, in part what Wayne was saying, we're at the end run. And maybe we're getting all the residuals relative to the total dissolved solids. And maybe that's part of the problem with the hardness that we're experiencing, even after investing in a system that conditions water and putting a carbon filter in that hopefully mitigates somewhat because we don't have as much of a problem with the uh, sulfur smell. But it's clearly a problem uh, in the water, even as we've treated it uh, in obviously other people have chatted about and David, correctly put forth, uh, that's an ongoing concern. So I'd like, that's in your letter, I assume that uh, Aaron sent over, but I just wanna make sure that point was put before the, uh, the board this evening as well. Thank you. Okay. Fred, I, I found the letter in my spam. Uh, okay, so we did get something today. You might wanna check, check yours as well. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I guess it, to me, it, it sounds like this is an issue that needs to be addressed and some things could be done to improve the water quality in Pine Plains Estates. And it's a matter of, I guess, figuring out what's the best uh, solution to this, because I, I think there needs to be a solution. We need to figure out how to improve the water quality. 
And I think it's up to it's up to the uh, I guess water commissioners and water superintendent to maybe come up with a proposal to the to the town as to how best to address this issue, what options we have. And, and I guess I appreciate the Fine Plains Estates bringing this to, to our attention and, and I guess continuing to bring it to our attention until it's been resolved. Uh, and if there's funding needed to, to either uh, figure out or design a, a system or to hire a consultant or lab to do testing, water quality testing, uh, I think that that's an option for the town town to consider, and put that some of these options uh, that are developed with, with a cost estimate, so we can move forward and, and ask for federal funding that's be hopefully coming available to, to help us address this. Uh, I think it's you know we all are, we've talked about it and realize there's a problem. And, and I, I guess I'd like to see us move forward with, with some kind of proposal on, on paper that we can, we can uh, look at and, and use to uh, support a funding request. And I, I think it should happen sooner rather, I mean, as expeditiously as possible. I mean, I, I, I think about there are, there are new lots being built in Pine Plains Estates that this can't help the, uh, the, the, the sale value. Um, if someone wanted to turn their house over, um, that's not going to help either. Um, and I frankly worry about other things that may be in the water that that we're not seeing yet. Um, and 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 we don't want to turn a blind eye to 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 the unknown um, just because it's unknown. I just wish that we could do it sooner rather than later. And I. And I very much think that closing that loop, there's no downside to closing that loop. I don't know what the price tag, Wayne, would be, but there's no downside to closing that loop. I don't know whether it's going to help one bathroom in a house. And I don't under, that's a head scratcher to me. Um, you know, maybe they use different piping. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. And, and unless you guys are going to start to bottle, you know, spa waters, uh, we got to fix this. Okay. Okay. By the way, one of the homeowners did switch from uh, the peck pipe to copper in his house, and it did not change. Nope. It that didn't. Was okay. Gary Maynard. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so Wayne, is this something that you and the water commissioners can uh, address in the next uh, what several weeks? Develop something, some proposals, options. I'll say I'll try. I'll get right on it. I'll start making phone more phone calls tomorrow. It's just you know how some people engineers and that work. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, Fred, uh, Brian Margolis, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, I just want to uh, thank uh, Jonathan and and uh, David. Um, we've owned a lot in Pine Plains for about five years, and we're just getting ready. Uh, to begin construction probably in the next two or three months. And this has really uh, frightened us, to be honest with you. Uh, and I concur with Jonathan and David that we really may not move forward until we get some real clarification on what's going to be done. Uh, there's nothing worse than uh, spending the kind of money we're gonna spend and, and not having uh, uh, appropriate water uh, for whatever reason. So uh, we would, I certainly would appreciate uh, uh, some real emphasis and priority put on this issue. Um, and uh, I just want to thank you. Okay, Brian. Thank you. So you're, you're a property owner, but you haven't built a house yet. Right. And we're, you know, where our plan was to begin construction in the next uh, few months. So, uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a major concern for us. Wayne, how long would it take to close that loop? I mean, I, I'm not saying that that's the solution, the, the end all be all, but I'm just wondering how long it would take to close the loop. To, I mean, Keith's still here. To Keith, what would you think to get to get to the tracks, it's like seven or eight hundred feet. So you could probably do that in, say, less than a week. 
the, the, the big issue is um, getting a permit and getting under the railroad tracks. That's going to be by far the biggest obstacle and the most expensive. The, ra the railroad, as we've dealt with in many other issues in the past, um, they don't, they don't, it's, it's hard for us to deal with them on, on a scale of a little town of Waitley with the railroad at, at, you know, more or less a federal level. Okay, well, that's something I, I guess to consider in our options, at least extend the line to, to the railroad and that may take longer to, to get through that part and try to come up with some cost or estimate of what that would be so we have a total project cost. Keith, would, would the people who you would deal with for the permitting be the same people who ultimately were giving the green light for the fix on Christian Lane? Possibility. I mean, one thing that we have maybe going for us now that we didn't in recent years is that that the the rail itself is governed and owned by um, Commonwealth of Massachusetts now, whereas in the past when we were dealing with Pan Am or B&M Railroad, that was a lot more bureaucratic. Going forward, you know, we probably will have better luck um, dealing with Mass DOT and the rail division. Um, so yes, Jonathan, that may be where we start with and, and find out what they're going to require. Uh, I'm, I'm at the very least, they're gonna probably require that it be jacked and that a sleeve be put in. Um, that would be my, my guess at the very least that they would require. And knowing by the time you get down that depth, dealing with the water table, it, it's going to be very diff, you know, a lot more expensive because there's a lot more to deal with. Okay. It sounds like you're familiar with what needs to be done and it's a matter of, of getting approvals and, and timing and, and whatever, so. And money. Okay. You know, money, and that's one of the things that, you know, I, I know in talking with the water commissioners in the past that's sort of on their um, their radar screen, and but they need, they need, you know, money in their enterprise fund to do it. Yeah, but, but money, I mean, this is a water quality issue. Um, and the, the pathway to, to state money when it comes to water quality issues in, in 2021 is an easier pathway than it was back a handful of years ago before other parts of the country had their challenges. So it, it, there are calls that should be made. Okay. Uh, so Brian, what would be... What would be our next steps to hear from the water commissioners on proposal? Yeah, I, yes, I, I think that's the answer in it. Quite honestly, I would be surprised if, it, if it's three or four weeks, um, but it, it sounds like Wayne will try his best. Okay, and, and I, I guess, uh, Pine Plains Estates is, is interested in what's happening. So I guess David would be what the contact for that. And, and I guess I am our, the board's liaison person with the water department. So I, I guess I'm available to discuss and review any options and, and help the best I can. So uh, Wayne, I think uh, if you need a, a ad hoc committee, whatever, I, I think we could get a few people together to to help you with this. David, is that agreeable to you? Are you, uh, you are the lead person for your, uh, what, uh, homeowner association there? Or? Certainly, I think as long as we know that, you know, we're looking at it and we can get uh, some action going forward, all, all the better. Uh, I know that one of the things that you had brought up was that there was an option for some grant money coming forward. 
So if we can help that way, let us know. Right. Well, it, it may help getting some support from a, a homeowners association for helping for addressing a problem. That may help the grant. We'll so. certainly bottle up some water from the bathrooms and send it to the state if that helps or whatever you'd like. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, anybody else want to comment on this uh, subject we're talking about? Okay, well, I appreciate it. Joyce? No, I was just gonna say thank you. You summed it up very nicely. I'm really glad we got all this out in the open and sounds like there'll be some motion on this in the coming months. Right, okay. Okay, I appreciate all you people from Pine Plains Estates coming forward and uh, keep telling us what problems you're having. Uh, I guess it's good to hear uh, and send the stuff to to uh, Brian, any, any uh, other comments, memos, uh, resolutions you have from your association, we'd be glad to glad to hear that. And, and just one other thing, uh, you know, I think all of us would say we love living here. Okay, Waitley is a fantastic place that we've all moved to. We moved here for different reasons, but we love it. And uh, it's it's too bad that the only time that we've ever come to a board meeting is because there's a problem. <laughs> and I think most of us would all agree that, you know, we love it. I mean, where else can you have a Christmas parade come by your house every year or, you know, the 250th anniversary? You know, so kudos to all of you for that. So thank you. And you all have a good evening. And thanks for listening to our concerns. Thank You're you. Welcome. You're very welcome. Okay. Um, welcome to stay on the rest of our meeting if you, if you would, if you want. But we're going to continue with other quite a few other business items here. Okay, uh, next would be the COVID-19 state of emergency, uh, our uh, resolutions and directives. Uh, Brian, you're proposing some changes. Yeah, can, can we just go back before before we move on and, and what are we doing in terms of the, <clears throat> in terms of the hardship things? What What's, what's our next steps there? Just so that works. For what, the water merger? Yeah. It, we've kind of been bouncing yeah. back and forth between the, the different, well, the different isn't, projects. Is it one option to look for uh, what what is it? Some of this federal money, uh, what's it, the AR, ARP money? Uh, I forget which grant you said could be used to, to uh, help. With, with with some of the hookup fees, uh, I, I guess I like to maybe see something from the water commissioners as, as to what what options are available and what what they would prefer. I, I guess. I think would it be okay to uh, to. Uh... I mean, I feel like I don't want to make a decision without a lot of input and maybe some more thought from the um, from the water commissioners, maybe toss it to them to make a recommendation, a proposal. Um, and at the same time, we've got to be considering other things that we might want to do with that uh, same pot of money. But um, if we had a nice proposal in writing um, with, you know, the, the, like the reasons for whatever things you're proposing would be, you know, if there's some reasoning behind, oh, you know, why should we, uh, like, whatever, the, if the proposal is we pay for the entire cost of everybody's, then what's the rationale? If the uh, idea is we pay half the cost for everybody's, what's the rationale? If the idea is means testing, uh, you know, use the, you know, like, what's the rationale and what would the cost be? I mean, that I feel like having something like that in front of us would be a good thing to do. And maybe that's, what we send back to the water commissioners, ask them to, to bring something a little more concrete. Okay. Does that seem like a reasonable request? Well, it does to me. I think we should get something in writing from them. Uh, I mean, we rely on our experts all the time. You know, we rely on our boards for their expertise. And, and I know the subject has come up before, but let's, um, let, let's say the next step, I think, is to have a solid proposal in hand. Nicholas had a question. The, the proposal might um, be affected by what the grant money, what the what the federal money is able to be used for. That the way that the the water commissioners made their proposal could be predicated on what 
on on what would be most effective and meet the criteria of the of the monies. And so it seems like maybe some communication from the select board or whoever knows about the grant money to the water commissioners would be helpful. Hmm. Well, I I don't know that much detail. Hmm. I know Brian, do we do we have more details to, to pass on that would help? Yeah, we can. As that uh, I had I had. Uh, sent to the board, the, the interim final rule on the, on the uh, America Rescue Plan Act funding was adopted on May 10th. Um, that was the email you sent yesterday? Yeah, that was the link in the, in the email. Okay. Um, it, it's, um, I mean, I think there's two categories it falls under. One is to address negative impacts caused by the public health emergency. So we could make a, if you wanted to have a means-based uh, a means-based uh, program. I think it falls under that. And also there's there's the, the really broad category of, of investments in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. So even if we want, even if the board just hypothetically wanted to pay for the whole entire thing, I think that would also be an eligible use of the, of, mm. of the sources. So I, so I think it's, I, I think the answer is both. Um, yeah, I'm happy to, if I'm happy to look at draft proposals or listen to draft ideas. Um, before it comes back to the board. Uh, I'm more than happy to do that. Brian, can you send that to me? The, um, the... Sure, hope you have some time to read. <laughs> I can't wait. I know, it's exciting. I, I, I think whatever proposals are, are presented, the, the water commissioners need to also address the Concerns of Pine Plains Estates. I mean, and and by that, if, if no funds, no federal funds become available for that, what are we going to do? I mean, there's there's got to be an option uh, to to help to improve the water quality there. So if no funds are available, I I mean, you got to balance the need there versus other needs for the water system, I guess, as well. So. Right, if it's a if it's a health issue, one, though, one if, if it's a health that, issue, we we might be able to get the state to jump in. Yeah, and particularly if the select board gets involved, also, uh, because you guys do have clout in your roles. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, nice. Nicholas. That was so nice of you. No, I understand what you That's mean. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I think I think if it's a public health issue, the state would get involved, Fred. I really do. Okay. If, if only somebody from the Board of Health was on this Zoom meeting. We have someone, don't we? All right, oh, I'll good. do that too. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I don't. I didn't know anything about this this water issue, so um, I guess yeah. Why don't you send me stuff on that too? <laughs> All right. Wayne. <laughs> I got a question for Wayne about the water quality. I mean, where where does DEP stand on this? Because you would think if it was a, a health issue, they would be all over it. As far as I know, it's not. It's okay. still drinkable water. It's just it's more. Yeah, you know, I mean, everybody I've, I've talked to in other towns that have had this issue. It's more of a what do you call it? An inconvenience than a health issue? An aesthetic. They call it an aesthetic issue. Yeah. yeah. Do they? I, I just have to ask. Do they have? Is do they have their own water source there, or is it part of the whole town? Yeah, it's part of the whole town. Yeah. Isn't that funny? So, they, yeah. Wayne, I'm sorry for bringing this up, but do we know if it's an issue in other parts of the town, or do we know that it's not an issue in other parts of the town? You no, unless yeah. I mean the only thing I can go off of is if somebody calls me and tells me. Right, well, and I, it's mainly now. I mean, you used before the filters got put in. You used to get it all over town. Now that the filters went in, now it seems to be just more confined down there. As far as I know, I mean, it could be in other places. I'm just not hearing about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think there's other other people in town that have dealt with it, but it's not this uh, 
uh, extreme the case, uh, I guess. I have a water filter in my shower because of the smell, sulfur smell, right? It's uh, the sulfur smell. See, I yeah, never. It, and I keep changing it every six months. I, I live with it, but uh, and I, and I know other some of my neighbors on the street have water systems. Well, you probably know too, water purification systems. And it's you know we're a different portion of the water distribution system, so it maybe affects us less than people at the end of the line. I guess so, or we get more volume going through here than people yeah, ours, at the, end of the line. <laughs> yeah, ours would get changed over constantly. Yeah, where theirs isn't. Right. I guess my point being that I, I think we want to avoid a, a, a directed approach at, at one area if it's if the solution is, is warranted for a larger, you know, mm -hmm. for a larger portion of the town, or it's a system wide, you know, system wide thing that 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 mm -hmm. folks have become accustomed to, I guess, who have been here for longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it could be a phase in if we address the most serious areas first and, and see if we can correct it and that may affect the rest of the system. I mean, has anybody on this Zoom ever smelled sulfur water? You mean in general or at our house? In general. Oh, yeah. It's, I, 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 yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. unstable. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I joke yeah, around. But, you know, Saratoga, Saratoga Springs is a tourist attraction because of their sulfur water. I mean, yeah. it, you know, but it's disgusting. Yeah, it is. And our residents shouldn't have to put up with it. I mean, no, no nobody's saying people should have yeah, to put no, up I know. with it here. I'm just <laughs> trying to expedite the process. <clears throat> and and I don't think that it happens in other parts of town is my guess because none of us have heard about it. And maybe this will elicit a, a wave of phone calls to Brian, but none of us have heard about it. And I live at an area that has a, a, a non-closed loop. Six. <laughs> That's extension six, right, Wayne? Yeah. Um, so I don't have neighbors who complain about it that they've ever told me. And again, where does it, cl it closes off at, at the bridge, right, Wayne, on Swamp Road? Yeah, yeah. So, and again, I'm not on the town water supply, thankfully, but sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Brian, do you have enough comments on the water quality issue now? Yeah, I'm assuming, I'm assuming we're gonna go with Joyce's idea of, of the, the board wanting to see some proposal or proposals as to as to how those funds might be used to help those that who are part of the water merger project. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ready to talk about COVID nineteen? Do you do you need me for this too? If you want to stay, you're welcome. <laughs> um, I don't think so. You're welcome to stay. I, well, I, I, have, I have to get home from work, but, I, but since it's COVID and it's health, if you need me, I'm happy to stay, but um, I wouldn't mind going home. <laughs> I think I have cross that. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, I had suggested revisions to two of the, um, two of the orders, and really they're there to address the loosening of the mask mandate that the governor uh, the actions he took on uh, April 29th um, were essentially re reverting back to um, masks are not required outdoors, where social distancing can be kept um, from people other than those in your households. Um, prior to this, prior to the loosening of this, it was wear a mask all the time in public. Um, so there's there's uh, proposed revisions in the orders that were included in the meeting packet. Uh, I did ask, um, Keith had a question about, um, and I passed it along to Fran about whether it mattered a person's uh, vaccination status in terms of, in terms of um, wearing a mask or not. And, and Fran's response was that it, that, it, that it doesn't make a difference right now. 
um, at least the guidance that they're getting from Mass DPH. Um, so I don't know if you have any questions about about the, the orders, I can bring them up if you want. I can say I, I read through them and they sound quite reasonable. I mean, we're still basically saying indoors, masks, outdoors, when you're not able to social distance, if you're in a car with another a vehicle with another person, not from your household, those are all still mask times. And if you're outdoors and you can social distance, then you don't have to wear a mask. And that I, I think not only is it reasonable and consistent with the law, it's just um, I, I, I would have no objection to those changes. And I think that was uh, uh, when I read over these earlier this afternoon, they all look um, very consistent and reasonable. Yeah, I, I read them over too. And I, I have no problem with, with the changes you're proposing, uh, Brian. Good. Okay, we need a, a resolution to act on these. Um, yeah. Um, then I would move that we um, um, approve the revi the revision, which involves revoking the, I don't know if we need two votes on this to revoke the old one and start the new one. Um, what do you um, think? Yeah, it's written that it supersedes it. So I think if you adopt if you adopt the new okay. ones, it will supersede those. Okay. I'd, I'd like to move that we uh, adopt the new um, COVID nineteen uh, policy on. Uh, oh, where I'm going to have the wrong thing up here. Um, the uh, directive on town employees returning to work, or is this the? Yeah, it's the first one. It's the directive on town employees returning to work. I'd like to. Um, uh, move that we adopt the modifications proposed here. Second. Okay, any further discussion? And these would be effective as of today, Brian? Um, one of them is written as the 13th and I mean, it's, it's the other one is effective, so effective immediately. So tomorrow when folks come back to work. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Roll, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay. Moving on. Uh, all business uh, proposed uh, fiscal year 2022 operating budget, capital projects, and proposed transfers. Brian? Yep. So I wanted to. Uh, provide the board an update on um, where the finance committee's at in terms of in terms of the budget planning process, and I'm going to share my screen with the tool that they that they've been using. Um, can everybody see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is where where the finance committee is at right now. Um, so this is a comparison. Well, I'll, I'll just, so the top here is um, an automatic calculation of, of what the tax rate would be um, and the tax levy based on uh, the state aid numbers that we have currently. And that's, uh, which I got an email earlier. Um, so this, this uh, is with the house, uh, house uh, ways and means numbers um, in terms of state aid. So what's what's being proposed is, is um, town operations. Um, well, you can see the numbers here. I, I, I won't read them all, but that's what's being proposed for town operations, schools, debt, and there's a line here for non, uh, non debt capital projects. Um, total town operating budget of 5477000 $1,313, um, it's a 3.24% increase over uh, the prior year's um, total town operating budget. Um, so that's where they're at. Um, on the right here is tax rate calculations. That's how we come up with um, the tax rate over here. 
Um, it's essentially um, total expenses minus um, all or other sources of revenue except the property tax. Um, and that's the tax levy. So that's um, how we come out with that, how we come out with that rate. Um, and again, the, this is a projection, it's a projected rate. Um, the tax rate will fluctuate based on, on total assessed value that's set by the assessors um, sometime in the fall. So it's always a projection. Um, also on the sheet here, um, for number three, talks about capital projects and other miscellaneous expenditures. These are all the, the projects that the finance committee um, are supporting in the proposed transfers um, that they're also supporting. Um, so it would leave us um, if all of these were funded. And these are the these are the same capital projects that were. Um, there was a report from the capital improvement planning committee. Um, that went to the select board and the finance committee um, back when the, the two boards were meeting together. Um, there was support for most of these projects. The ones that the ones that that didn't receive support, um, they're proposing to um, for the Whitley Elementary School driveway. They're proposing to split that into two years um, to fund forty five thousand now and forty five thousand next fiscal year. And the other one that that um, didn't receive support for this year was um, new fencing and gates at the um, East and West cemeteries. Um, and then we had previously, the board had previously talked about winter maintenance of the sidewalks and we decided to, to remove the, the item, um, the used Kubota tractor. Um, the recommending, uh, using $200,000 of free cash as they've done in the previous years to reduce the tax rate, um, $20,000 for the 250th anniversary celebration. Um, and there's some miscellaneous articles here that, that they're supporting. Um, crack ceiling for the driveway out in the parking lot at the town offices here. Um, there's a frontier capital request, um, police reform expenses um, of $15,000. So you notice that the two transfers that they're proposing, one is to building stabilization and one is to vehicle stabilization. They told the $45,000. So their, their discussion was that we'll take the $45,000 that would have gone to the parking lot and um, we'll move it into stabilization. Um, that's what the discussion was. Because didn't we add the stabilization in excess last year to make sure that we had access to money if we needed it. We added the stabilization above and beyond. I think it was $50,000 so that we, we could access it if, if we had a, a, a budget crunch because of COVID. Uh, I believe we, I'd have to look, look up the amount, but I believe we, we moved money to stabilization. Right, and that money before. stayed in stabilization, obviously. Yep. And, and remind us where... The 172 is a bit south of where it normally is for free cash after these 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 uh after we offset some of our tax levy. Yeah, we, we try to be I I think it's been the practice of, of the of the finance committee in this board to try to be around two hundred thousand dollars. Right. So it's south of where it normally is. Yep. What did we get in um when free cash was certified last fall, what did we, where, where were we? How much money did we get? Um, the account balances are here somewhere. Oh, there we go. That's what we had started with. So this uh, 613, 754. Okay. I, I wish it was a little bit more in free cash sitting there, but. But I get it. 
Ryan, I have a, a just a quick question, if I could ask a little bit more in regards to the 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 philosophy behind not doing the parking lot at the elementary school this year, taking that forty-five thousand dollars and putting it in stabilization, but then in a sense you're agreeing to spend it next year, when I can I can guarantee you that unless you're going to know that by putting that money in stabilization is going to earn five or six percent. That's what it's going to cost you more next year to do it. So it's not, I just don't see the, the benefit of doing that at all. Yeah, I, I think that that's a good point. I, I think, I think it was, it was discussed briefly by the finance committee. Um, but obviously that's a decision that they made. I, it, it's something that, that, that I can bring up to them. Um, but I agree with you that, that if it's going to cost us $93,000 next year, um, I think we're, we're putting money into accounts um, that we have only to spend more next year. That's definitely what would happen. We'll lose money next by by next year. We'll be we'll be short money than we are if we do it now. So where would you take the money from, Keith? Don't put they they want to they want to put forty five thousand dollars into stabilization and defer the project for another year. Well, it's going to cost more than more next year. What's stabilization at right now? I can bring those up again. Sorry. It's okay. Um, generals, uh, 285,000. Capitals, 189,000. Some change vehicle stabilization, 60, 62, 63,000. Um, so we could do this without lowering capital state, without lowering stabilization. Just we wouldn't add to it. Correct. And and one of my one of my proposals for the board is in terms of the ARPA money. The town appropriated uh, almost eighty seven thousand dollars from general stabilization to fund the the fire protection aspect of the water merger project, and that that money's in an account right now, um, which we could, in theory, replace. We could just spend the ARPA money for those improvements to the water system and, and move that 87,000 back into mm. um, general stabilization. But that's that's a, a different topic. That's a different subject than what Keith is talking about. So if we funded the full amount this year from 45 to what, 90,000, that do I understand it? It won't affect the the tax rate being proposed because it's coming out of what stabilization, general stabilization. We're, We're proposing it to come out of free cash. So so it would come out of free cash, which which does not impact tax levy. Right. Right. But it, but but the one seventy two wouldn't change. You're just you're just moving the forty five instead of putting it into stabilization. You're spending it. Correct. Yeah. And, and, and I'm sorry, I missed it. Where's the other 45 coming from then? Um, well, they're, bo they're both coming from free cash. So it would yeah. be 90,000 from free cash. Right, total. right. But is that, is all of that 90 already removed from that 172? Yep. There's 45 yeah. here. And then there's, this adds up to 45. We, we, we should, we should definitely do that. I don't know why we're, if we put it in stabilization, it's going to earn like, you know, 0.05%. Okay. But the, the other thing we got to consider is there was other projects proposed for a capital improvements that were not funded or, or not, not recommended to be funded. And which this one is not also and I guess we've got to look at all the projects that we're going to now pick out one that we want to fund that wasn't approved by either finance or capital improvement committee. We've got to go back, I think, and look at the, all the projects to see if that is still the priority to do that. Because, 
yes, this is going to increase costs next year. The other projects proposed are also going to increase in costs next year as well. It's not like they're staying still and this is the only increase. Yeah, but this one, this project at least rose to the level of they said, okay, we've got to somehow fund this. Let's do it half this year and half next year. I think that to me means that it is a little bit more important than other things that were not funded. Well, I think- I mean, I'd, I'd be happy for them to tell, you know, to, to tell us more about their reasoning. And I think we're going to be meeting with them next week. But I guess, I, I, I yeah, I'd, I'd want to put it to them maybe the way Keith did and say, well, if this is going to cost us an extra 5% next year, it's not, what you know, what's the rationale for only doing it half this year and half next year? Because I understand it's not, they're going to pave half this year and they're going to pave half next year, right? They're going to put that money into an account and then wait for the other half to come next year. But then the other half next year is going to have to be, I don't know, $7,000 bigger. Or, you know. So that, anyway, I, I, would, I would listen to what they have to say, but I guess this is something I'd like to bring back to them and at least hear what they hear what they've got to say, and um, maybe uh, uh, maybe press them on their decision. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, I'm I'm agreeable to that. To hear what they have to say before we decide, I guess. I, I'm yeah. Let's 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 have the conversation next week. But again, I think I, I, I think the concept of, of just getting it done makes all the sense in the world. Okay. Okay, Brian. Move on. Yep, because it, it's um, related and that's that's uh, proposed staffing changes. Um, and there's, there's two that we have talked about um, or at least you've seen the material for. One is the, let me bring up the, let me bring up the meeting material before I start going. Um, so the first one is, um, and this, this happened more recently um, than not. Um, so we received word that our uh, town clerk, who is currently working town clerk and treasurer collector as a combined position, um, has expressed intentions to give up uh, the town clerk role. Um, so we're kind of feeling our way through that. Um, and we're trying to figure out what we think is best um, for the town in, in terms of how we're going to uh, staff those two positions so that that we get the best service possible. Um, so what's being what's being suggested is that Art will help explain that. So currently, this is what we have now. Uh, we have a combined, so I'm looking at the top of the chart. We have a combined treasurer collector and town clerk position. Um, it's a benefited position and it's, um, it's 40 plus hours a week. Um, and we have an assistant treasurer collector and assistant town clerk. It's a benefited position. Um, there's 15 hours budgeted for treasurer collector and there's five for the town clerk. Um, what's being proposed is that the town clerk and treasurer collector position be split. Uh, the town clerk, as you recall, is an elected position. Um, it's just so happened and, and worked out that Lynn has been elected um, these past elections. Um, that's why how we were able to combine the two positions. Um, so uh, the proposal is that the, the town clerk would, would be a separate position and there would really be no changes except we would have a new town clerk. Um, but it remains the the same 27 hours of um, budgeted for 27 hours. Well, benefit, um, benefit, the budget for benefits will have to go up probably. Yeah, there's, 
Yep, it, it could. Um, so then there'd be a, a separate town clerk. Again, that's an elected position. So um, we were fortunate that it just worked out these past these past years. Um, treasurer collector. Um, the, so the treasurer collector and assistant town clerk will be the same position. Um, treasurer collector um, would go back to what it was previously before the positions were combined. I'm told the treasurer collector uh, was a 30 hour position. Um, what had happened when they were combined is that some of the hours were reduced for the treasurer collector um, and they upped the, some of the hours for the uh, assistant treasurer collector, but we're proposing to, to go back to how it was before. And quite honestly, I, I think it's gonna be a, a better arrangement um, because there's, there's just a number of tasks that the treasurer collector really needs to do and, and does by themselves. Um, so I think that's just a better approach. Um, and then they would take on five hours for the assistant town clerk. And that would help with the transition from um, the new town clerk as well to have that person have some hours budgeted there to help. Um, and then the assistant treasurer collector would, would uh, be reduced down to 10 hours. It would no longer be a benefited position. Um, so we're gonna, we have the same number of, of benefited positions. It's just, Mm -hmm. it's assigned to different positions. Um, so that's the proposal. Um, because the treasurer collector is assuming more hours, there is a, I mean, there is a budget increase and that's included in, in the budget that, that I think the finance committee is, is, is good with. Um, and I think that they'll vote the next time that they meet. Um, so that's, that's just a, a proposed change for FY22. Uh, for the for the town town clerk treasurer collector, I don't know if there's, there's questions about that. Not me. Oh, this see, there's reason, though, Brian. Okay, and the, so the second, um, The second part of the agenda is is a new position that we had talked about, um, and this is a draft job description for that. Uh, the job description would need to, if the position's funded, the job description would need to be um, past practice would have would have me taken in front of the personnel committee, and then with a recommendation from the personnel committee to the select board, who has the ultimate decision on on both of these really. Um, but the idea here is that we're getting boards and committees help. Um, that's 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 one of the one of the focuses, and the other part is um, community development, economic development. We'll get the boards um, get the boards help. Um, I want I need I want to look it up um, for future reference. But the number of applications that have uh, come before the ZBA and planning board um, with solar and, and marijuana and just regular development and, and growth. It, it has to have at least doubled in the past couple of years, if not tripled. Um, quite honestly, they're overwhelmed. Um, and a lot of the issues that they're facing are, are, are really beyond their knowledge or, or uh, really beyond their knowledge it, it's a lot more complex um they're not they're not permitting single family houses anymore um and i've expressed my concerns about about all the grant opportunities that are out there um we could definitely use help with with grant writing grant administration reporting those types of you know those types of activities that are definitely a need for the town um You've heard my spiel about the need for long-term planning. Um, I think that's really important and it's stuff that that we don't necessarily have the staffing to do right now, but I think that matters um, that matters for the future of the town. Um, and there's you know there's miss there's a handful of other committees that 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 need help um, in my opinion. Um, the housing committee is one of them. Um, I've said this before there, there's 120 something thousand dollars of CPA money in an account 
in the housing trust and um, they just don't have the staffing or the resources to, to, to really get started. Um, so I think it's, it's, it would be a really great step for the town if, um, if we could add this position. Mm -hmm. Fine, uh, fine with it. Yeah, I read over the description. I, I thought it was a good draft and yeah. I would really like uh, the personnel committee folks to have a chance to you know put their eyes over it and make suggestions. But I feel like it uh, embodies the purpose you just described. You know, we're looking for someone who will do, um, you know, things that will support committees and things that will support grant writing um, and, you know, taking on those projects uh, themselves. And it seems, you know, there's like, you know, budget in every week you're going to go to three meetings or up to three meetings a week. Or we, there, there was a lot of things I liked in there um, uh, for the draft. So I think with that as a draft, I think it's um, it, it's really clear what the purpose of this position is. And I think whatever our next step forward, we've been in support of this, I think all along. Um, I think this is a good draft to be, um, uh, to I, if the finance committee is the next person needs to see it, that's that's fine with me too. I understand it won't go to the personnel committee unless it gets funded, right? Right, and so I did present this to the finance committee and the, you know, the the salary that's that's proposed with it um, is part of the, the budget that, the, the total budget number that we were looking at. So um, the finance committee uh, seemed to be okay with it. I think they see value in it. I think, I think they know from, I don't want to, I can't speak for them, but you know, there's a lot of stuff that they talk about wanting to do in terms of financial policies. Um, we had the issue about, you know, studying tax rate and tax classifications, if it made sense to yeah. have a split tax rate. It, it's it's these types of um, tasks that 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 they need help with, but that right. that I certainly don't have a ton of time to, to jump into it with them. Um because we're only a position in a really a position and a half here. Um, and there's, there's so many things to do. Um, you know, I've mentioned before, there's, there's things we need to address with OSHA, with our personnel policies. Um, there's a lot of work to be done for yeah. sure. Um, and it, at the same time, we don't want to keep, we don't want to be missing opportunities to, for state funding or, um, you know, projects that, that would be really important to the town. Um, and yeah, there's, there's just, there's a lot of stuff happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think this board is, is supported and encouraged you to, to develop this position, Brian, at our last uh, several meetings. Uh, so I, I guess I have, I have no problem with, with uh, moving forward with, with this, the only comment I would make is that you go into a lot of detail on what this, this uh, duties would be and all. I would maybe suggest try to uh, condense some of that. To, if you get too much detail, you may want to, you may scare people away from, <laughs> oh, oh, there's, there's so much more here to do that. I don't know where, I don't know if I could do all this. And try to maybe condense some of the descriptions here. Yeah, to make it a shorter description, and especially if you're going to advertise. I guess you'd have to uh, put something together to maybe shorter than this. So, yeah. Okay. So, do you need an action by this board? No, I. I we didn't have a chance to to look at the job description, and, and I, I just wanted to know if this was something that the board still wanted me to pursue, so. Okay. I think we're all in agreement, right? Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Moving on. Uh, this feedback received on expressions of interest for the One Stop for Growth program and discuss next steps. Yep. So community one stop for growth and Fred, we talked, we touched on this a little bit earlier. Yes. Um, this is the, well, it says it, says it. So one stop for growth. Um, 
it's the the program that the state is now requiring municipalities to go through um, to access a number of these grant programs. Um, so we had uh, the the board had decided that we we're going to submit five um, five expressions of interest um, on a number of different topics. Um, so it was the I ninety five exit thirty five um, area planning. Um, so their feedback was it would fit in the planning and zoning category. Um, so their recommendation was that we could apply for a community planning grant for that project. Um, public water system upgrades. Um, they talk about that. So what we mentioned was was closing the loops um, in the water systems. They suggested, well, you could try the MassWorks program. Um, so the, the next paragraph scared me a well, skip me away a little bit. It says to be competitive in this category, the project will need to be advanced in design and permitting, um, in addition to identifying a leveraged private development that is imminent. Um, so I, I think in terms of what the water, I'm not sure that this project is ready um, to apply for a mass works infrastructure program is, is essentially what they're telling us, unless we can identify, well, there's there's really two things. It needs to be advanced in design and permitting, which it's not. Um, and it needs to identify and leverage a, a private development that is imminent. And I don't, I can't think of anything to, to write for that. Um, well, Brian, there is, there is some activity occurring on Egypt Road. There is, there is a proposal to change some of the zoning to commercial and a, and a builder is planning to to construct something there. And, and I guess I would I would say that, I don't know if the water extension is critical or not, but extending the water system would, would all, not only promote commercial growth there, but there's several residential lots that probably could be developed if the water was, was extended. So uh, I, I guess that would be a benefit to, to get more, uh, more housing, residential housing in town if the water system was extended. And, and the other thing that may, that may help is, in the proposal is assuming the, the highway department does some of the work for extending the water system to, to use that as in-kind match or in-kind services or, or town contribution to the project to make it more viable not just looking at, at uh, state or federal funds. And, you know, I, I don't know, you know, I, uh, how soon we could get something from the water commissioners on, on what it would cost and, and what's needed. But, you know, I, I think part of this the extension could, could be done this year yet. Uh, maybe not under the railroad, crossing, but, but the rest of it could be done this year yet. So I would look at this as something that's almost shovel ready. And, and for design, I don't know how much you would need for design to extend a water system, whether that could be an inexpensive cost or the, the I, I don't know. Fred, just to let you know, at the moment, all of the building lots on Egypt Road already have town water. Oh, they do. Yes, when when Fair purchased that entire piece of property, um, he he took care of it at that point in time. So they all have water all the way down to the railroad tracks. That last lot that's undeveloped that you're referring to that has water service to it at this point in time. And we and we haven't heard of 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 uh, poor quality of water on Egypt Road anywhere that we know of. I. I don't know. I don't know. Right. But, but we haven't heard, right? Right. Either we heard or we haven't, right? So, yeah. But but is the the water main go all that all the way to the railroad, or is it just the water service is out that far? The the water main does not go all the way. He just put in he just put in services. So um, right. there's there's ample water. You know, certainly for residential use, there's. Just, sufficient amount of water. But if it was more to become commercial like proposed, is there enough there today? That that's a 
depending on what the commercial, um, what that applicant would require, that may not be. Right. Okay. You want me to go to the next one? Okay. Um, the other one we submitted was increasing affordable housing opportunities. Um, and their recommendation was, again, a, a community planning grant. Uh, and again, that's, um, that's the same as what was, was suggested for the exit 35. Um, so we had a, a, just a really a broad category of expansion of industrial land. Um, and that would fit into the pre-development and permitting category. Um, but I'm not, I, I don't know that we have a site. I, I'm not sure it's ready for the site readiness program because we don't really have a site identified. Um, and then reuse of legacy school buildings. Um, this was written broadly to encompass the blue school um, in the center school, even though we don't currently own the blue school. Um, but they suggested that that this may be a fit for the underutilized properties program. And I was thinking more in terms of the center school um, because we have ownership of it. Um, so those that was the feedback they provided to us. Um, and then they had an overall note on the project. The municipality qualifies for the special projects in a small town or rural community category in the one stop. Um, it's for projects that, that may not clearly fit in the continuum for special consideration. Uh, so that's, that's where we are in the process. Uh, if we wanna pursue a project, applications are due June 4th. Uh, so we have a meeting, so we, the board has a meeting May 26th. 26. Um, but really I think any work to put together an application is going to have to happen, so you know, in the next couple of weeks for that meeting. Because um, if we did it on 26, that wouldn't give us a lot of time to put yeah. together a, a, an application. So I, I was wondering if there was something that would, um, one, possibly two, two might be difficult, maybe one that we want to pursue. I mean, the two that stick out to me are the Water. the two things that are the the center school and the um, in either the exit thirty five area or the affordable housing opportunities. Well, I, I would say that the exit thirty five and the affordable housing opportunity both, if possible, um, the center school. I, I guess I've assumed we're still planning on putting that out for an RFQ. So, yep. you know, that's not a financial issue. That's just a capacity issue to find time to do it. Um, but right. I, would like, I would like to do both affordable housing and the 35 economic development, if at all possible. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're not, we're not competing against ourselves, so to speak. Um, we might be, but. Or those two. We might be. But I don't see a way around it. Wasn't well, the exit 35 deal with housing as well? Or not? It, it, it can. Yeah, I, I don't think we were, I, I don't think we were excluding housing from, from yeah. that area. Um, there, there may be other, upper, other areas of town for housing. Yeah. Mm. I, I mean the the and housing still I, I guess could be related to the to the center school reuse. I, I guess that's still could come up as a as a response to the RFI. Uh, and mm. that and, and also it's not listed here, but the the uh, blue school trying to, to help or promote or, or work with the, the developer there to, to develop that, which would again, probably fall under housing. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, they're recommending housing in the at, at the at the planning and zoning level, essentially. Um, hmm. That 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 what do we need to what do we need to plan for, and what do we need to change uh, hmm. in terms of our regulations to encourage affordable housing? Um, I, I also think that there were that there were, there's been talk about a housing needs assessment and housing production plan. Um, I think for years now. Uh, with the housing committee and, and, and with FERCOC, uh, but I, I don't think those have gotten done. Um, well, the, the housing needs study is is underway with FERCOC. I could say that uh, it's probably several months away from being completed. So there is activity on a highway on a housing needs study being done right now, but. Yeah. As far as the, the impacts on, on zoning and, and, and planning, uh, that's not in the not in there in that picture right now. So I guess I guess the question is whether there's one of these that stands out or one or two that stand out that again I I I, I would say that unless I'm missing something uh, I would say exit 35 and and affordable housing. Yeah. Um, there was something on the um that that uh, when Brian said that the thing that kind of made you stand back was that uh, does that apply to all of these like are they expecting all of these to have um you know like uh, you know business partners and then all kinds of things like that um or was that just the exit 35 one uh that was the so that's that's typical for the mass works infrastructure program that they're looking to leverage private investment and private development with their infrastructure yeah. upgrades and they're really looking uh, to be quite honest, they're looking, they're looking at 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 big developments that that don't happen in our, you know, in smaller towns. Okay. That's that's I think what they're looking at. Um, you know, can we can we revitalize a mill if we can get? It, it's, okay, right. It, it's so that doesn't bigger. necessarily. I think we don't have to apply to that particular. Uh, program. You said the mass works, um, and I can't remember the next two words that came after it. Program. Yeah, we don't have to apply to that one. No, I mean I, ma the, that program was what they did with Ludlow Mills. Yeah. So okay, now I'm just trying to understand the feedback they gave us, and but so the the feedback they gave us doesn't necessarily eliminate any of them from our list, but the. Uh, maybe the most positive of the feedback they gave were for those two projects that John cited, the housing and the 35, exit 35. Is that, am I, am I understanding that? Is that a reasonable way to rephrase what the feedback we got is? Yeah, I also think the, you know, the, the underutilized properties program, I suspect again, what they're thinking about is, is larger properties in the center school. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it doesn't mean that they're not, uh, but then there's also the special project in a small town of rural community category. And that's kind of what, that's got me to kind of thinking about, well, is that something, is that something that they would fund in terms of the center school? Mm -hmm. Um, but I'd have to look into that a little bit closer. Um. Uh, the underutilized properties program would be for construction. So that would, that would mean that, that the town would have to make the decision that it wants to retain ownership, which I don't know that the board yeah, has done not, yet. Not quite there yet. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that may be premature. Uh, but it, if, if we want to focus on the, the um, exit 35 in the, the, increasing affordable housing, we I can start preparing an application for that. And we can stick the new person with the rest of these 
Yeah. <laughs> well, a new person, the first thing that they do should be the RFQ or the RFI for the center school in, in a heartbeat. So yeah. as soon as the planning board is done with them, right? That's right. But you know, we we still have the 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 blue school to deal with, even though the town doesn't own it. And I understand the developer is having difficulties uh, moving forward with a with a project there. Uh, you know, at one point he proposed, you know, ten units in the building itself, and another ten behind on the vacant lot, you know, that's, that's 20 housing units. That's that's considerable amount of housing for a town like Whateley to increase mm -hmm. affordable housing. Uh, yes, we don't own the property, but maybe there's a way we, we can help or, or leverage or coordinate activities with a, with a developer to further promote that. And maybe we'll give some money, I, I guess, to match if we think it, it would make the project go. Do we know what the what the holdup is? I, I've heard it's getting financing or, or tax-free financing or low-income financing, what, what, whatever developers use to finance right. projects yeah. at, at low cost to them. Yeah, I think, I think that maybe the tax credits fell through that he was hoping for. I think it was the historic tax credits. Yeah. I, 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 I hate to see the building sit. It's been, what, two, three years already with no activity. It's, it's going to continue. Yeah, that would fall under something with a partnership, wouldn't it? Right. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, it, how much of a partner do we want to be or either just... Uh, Coordinating partner or financial partner or whatever you want to call it. Is it is it fair to say that that perhaps should have been due diligence that the buyer should have done prior to agreeing to this or or did something change post sale? Well, he had nothing to lose and his price was was minimal and there was no conditions. On, on the sale that anything anything had to be done within a say a specific time period. So it was it was just sold to get rid of the property. Well but he's paying property taxes on it now isn't he? Yes, yes he is, yes. Yeah so I mean there is something it's he, he's paying he has a cost for something that has no foreseeable revenue. T today, right. Yeah. So I, I just, I just, I just think that, and maybe, maybe something changed, but you know, if you're going to buy something and you're counting on different levels of tax credits, you you want to be able to make sure you're going to get those. That that being said, I don't know whether there's something we can do to. Is there an appeals process that we could get involved with with the historical tax credits, or is that a, a done deal? I I think he's always welcome to reapply. I I think. Him my last conversation with him, he, he, the last email communication, I think he said he applied like three times. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know the historical commission has been supportive in terms of, in terms of, in terms of putting letters of support, but you're going to get tired of me saying this, but this is a per perfect opportunity for a community development person. Yeah. It yeah. really is, is, is to, is to spend the time and work with a developer and to see what what they need. Right. Um, I mean, I, I guess I, I wonder, like right now, it sounds like we all have really good arguments for prioritizing the two projects that John mentioned, housing and exit 35. So I'm not hearing anybody saying anything against that. And uh, housing, this is on the planning level, right? So it, yep. does, it can include the blue school. I mean, it can include, include all these things, but I, I don't think we're right. We're trying to write that grant right now. I think we're just trying to decide what the topics are. And I feel like we've gotten to the point where we've decided what the topics are. Yeah. Is this, is this worthy of a motion, Brian? Do, is that what we need to do? Or do we just need to give you our blessing? Um, you need to tell me what to do. <laughs> I, nice. I they You're being recorded. With, unless Fred and Joyce have a beep, and I don't think they will. Um, proceed with those two projects. 
Yeah, I would support that. Yeah, I, I support that as well. Right. And cool. you have to come back to us to sign something to submit. Yeah, May we'll talk about it May 26th, uh, at the next meeting, May 26th. They're due, the applications are due June 4th. Okay. Okay, sounds good. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, moving on, okay, new business. Discuss concerns about ponding of water adjacent to Dickinson Hill Road. And I, I guess this was brought up by, by Keith. Uh, Keith? Yes, um, I had brought this to Brian's attention. I had spoken to the land owner. I left a voicemail and she had called me back and we've talked um, in previous times about it, but nothing seems to be getting done. And I'm just, um, I'm sort of dealing with the fact that I'm having a um, other residents who live up there that are concerned that they're going to be um, impacted by a potential failure and in their in their you know estimation if they wake up in the morning and they can't get out of their driveway because their their property has been damaged because of this um, where do where do we go and so um, I just feel at this point in time we probably need to take something a little bit more formal and and notify them in writing instead of just the verbal communication that I've had. And I, you know, I feel that at least get a response back from them as to what their intentions are. This is a um, private property that is um, jeopardizing the town road. Have you responded to them in writing? Not yet. That's what this is all about. And Brian is um, probably, I'm assuming, is, wants the select board permission to send this letter. Yeah, there's there's a draft letter in the packet that yeah. Keith had started and then I finished and sent it to the board. I, I don't know. I guess my, I, I support what, what you're saying and what you're, you're doing. Uh, I, I don't know what it looks like. I haven't been there to see it. Uh, I, I guess... I'm hesitant to sign something like this without actually seeing it myself. I, I would think that maybe you should sign, you should send a letter to them first to alert them of that uh, concerns and whatever. And if they ignore it, then we come back to the board and then the board will take an action. Uh, I don't actually have that same hesitation. I, I, I don't feel like I would want to substitute my assessment of the situation with Keith's. I think I have faith in Keith's ability to assess the situation and that it's a, a real danger or a real risk. Maybe that's a better word. Um, and if he's asking us as sort of the powers that be to support him on this, to you know, send an official communication, I, I'm actually quite in favor of doing that. I, I guess I had a different question and um, that would be for Keith. And, and that is like, what kind of action would they have to take to, to fix the problem? Like, is this something where it's gonna, you know, cost them you know, millions of dollars and it's a, it, or, or is this something where there's like some obvious solutions that they could implement and take care of this in a relatively straightforward way? You know, basically, you know, the. What's happening is that this pond on their property has a um, drain and it has, I'm making the assumption is the drain is silted in and it's not working properly and the water elevation has continued to rise and um, it, it literally right now is, um, we're down to inches from cresting out and going and overflowing out into the town. Yeah, so a drain needs to be cleaned and out. So it's, it's, I've, I had brought the um, issue. I had talked to Scott Jackson quite some time ago, and he said that, you know, there's nothing that he can do about it other than the, the owners need to, will need to apply to the Conservation Commission with what they're recommending on doing to rectify the problem. Yeah. I asked 
Ryan to take a look at it so that he could get a perspective of it. And, and he certainly, I think, understands where I'm at and the justification of this. Yeah. Keith, did I miss something? Did you have a conversation with them already? Yes. And their response was? I, I just have said to them that making sure they're aware of that the fact of this is not operating properly and that something needs to be done. And then I know I don't hear anything more. Approximately how long has it been since that you haven't heard? I, I've last talked to um, her about, it would have been back in 2020, late 2020. Okay. So, so it's been a while. Yeah. I, yeah, I just send a letter. This is not anything that's happened overnight. Yeah. I, I have no problem with this letter being sent. Yeah. Um, could I may, may, maybe make a motion that we send this, uh, we support sending this letter and sign it? If you want it signed by the select board, I'm, I'm happy to move that we sign uh, the letter, the draft that was in our packet. My, my only question, and I want to second that, but, but my only question is what is our authority? For them to act i don't know if i'm necessarily asking the you know that per se as much as i feel that we need something more in writing that we can show at, at a later time if if we have to go up there and spend thousands of dollars of our tax money you know my budget to repair something that should have been taken care of in my mind by yeah. the property owner, it's our yeah. recourse that we have something in writing that okay. we can go at back after it for. Yeah, and, okay. and it's just it, it's it's a very polite letter. It's just asking right. them to respond, I, right? It yeah. just says, "Will you please contact Town Administrator Brian Domina at your earliest convenience to let us know what steps you intend to take to avoid any possible damage to the roadway and surrounding properties." It's all we're we're just asking politely for them to respond. I got no problem with signing this right I, now. I, sign it on my screen. I would do it. <laughs> I, I'm 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 just wondering if they ignore it. What what are our what are our 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 steps? Okay. Right. So let's send it and, and find out what go, what happens. Well, they kind of ignored it so far. Well, other than their letter, but well, they might happens. take a letter more seriously. They might, uh, and they're not bad people. It might just be they don't necessarily see it as urgently as we do. And a letter would would send that message. It's polite. Um, it's not threatening in any way. I don't think I'd want to be threatening at this point. I just. We want some communication, and um, and and I think this is a logical next step, and we should we should do it. And if we if if there needs to be further steps, let's let's wait and see what the response is. Should we send it certified mail just for a cautionary tale? Probably. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Can let's send it. Do you need a motion, Brian, or no? I think we could have a motion. Yeah. I'll, I'll move to. Or Joyce already did. Didn't yeah. you, Joyce? So I'll second it. Okay. Uh, question, Keith, is this something clearly visible? If I was to drive up there, I could see it? You might drive into it. <laughs> it's it's very visible. And you know when you start to look at it, you'll see that the, the trees that are out in the middle of the pond that were normally been mowed around with a lawnmower, so. And it's, it'd be on the what, left side of the road? Yes. As you're driving up, it'll be on the left side. Okay. Had we had we driven past it in the parade, we wouldn't have had to. No. I know. I was making it. You know. Anyway. It's further, further. All right. Up. There's been a motion and a second. Okay. Roll okay. we'll call vote. Joyce. Aye. Jonathan. Yep. Fred. Yes. Okay. Uh, next item. Uh, Discuss recommendations from the highway building superintendent ending the probationary period of a highway department employee. Keith? Yeah, I just wanted to um, to report to the board that um, Quincy, who he had hired some time ago, at the time of his, um, that we hired him, he only had a, um, his hoisting license didn't meet our requirements. 
and he could not apply because the state had shut down the testing of the, um, the, the testing site had been shut down due to COVID. So we continued him on probation. Some time ago, we had told him that because this was not of his doing that we allowed him to start utilizing his benefits that he was accruing, but we were going to continue his probation until he successfully passed his tests. And I'm just reporting back to you that he has um, he has done that and has met met all the requirements. Okay, I, I would make a motion to um, uh, remove the probationary period for Quincy. A second. Okay, any further discussion? I, I just, does the select board really have to decide on probationary periods for employees like this? Apparently. Okay. Okay, we'll call folks. We can change the personnel policy sometime. Okay. Right. <laughs> Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? I'll note that change. Yeah. Okay, yes. Brother, yes. Okay, next, next item. Uh, new business is discuss uh, utility pole replacements in town at Long Plain and Christian Lane. I guess this item I brought up, and and I don't know if how many of you know, but uh, I guess Eversource is planning on replacing utility poles on all of Christian Lane. Well, Christian Lane from River Road to I think I ninety one and parts of Long Plain Road. Uh, there's white X's on all the poles that they're going to replace, and so some of my concerns are. The way they go about replacing poles, as we can see on River Road, we can see on, on uh, Christian Lane by the bridge, and I think even on Haydenville Road, uh, they put the new poles in and they left the old poles there. Well, they cut the tops off and I, I assume they're waiting for either Verizon or Comcast to move their lines over to the new poles before they take the old ones out. Well. This has been going on for over a year for these three locations. And if they're gonna do the same thing on Christian Lane, I can't imagine what it's gonna look like. It's like a tornado came through Christian Lane. You've got two different levels of poles there. You've got piles of dirt on the ground that are where they dug out the poles. Plus we're gonna have a celebration next year. And I assume part of it's gonna be on Christian Lane. This is the kind of view we want people to see on Christian Lane and in town. I, I think, you know, I realize that we, we can't control what Eversource does and they, I guess they have a right to, to maintain their polls and, and do that, but maybe we call them in and ask them to develop a, or, or submit a schedule, how are they going to do this? whether it's starting a, on one end or, or every other poll or whatever, and, and tell them, you know, if we're having a celebration next year, maybe uh, stay away from parts of Christian Lane. It's gonna be part of the parade route. Uh, I, I think we should get more information from the resource and even Verizon and Comcast to know what they're doing. And, and it also, well, and Keith is aware of, of the poll replacements in town and, and even the police department does uh, does special duty for all the, the uh, activities Eversource has in town. So they're gonna be involved as, as well. Uh, I guess I would like to see us uh, invite Eversource, Brian, to, to a meeting, at least them, and uh, tell them our concerns, what we're planning on doing in town and, and see what their proposal is to do this, to plan how they're going to do it. I have no problem with that. The, the sad thing is, I think you're going to find Eversource is going to be very willing to come to meet with the board. And then at the same point in time, they're going to say, well, they can't tell Verizon what to do. And that's the sad thing. Verizon is the ones that are the responsible for setting the polls in town that usually happens fairly quickly and as we all know Eversource comes right back in afterwards and does their 
portion and responsibility and then it just sits there for forever. Right. So I know at least we're bringing concerns to their attention. I don't know if we're going to gain anything or not, or or if if the uh, police the police uh, special duty can say, well, we're not going to do that on Christian Lane for these these six months because of our activities, we won't give you a police duty to do that. Even I, I don't know. Well, the best thing you can start off with is you know as have I'm gonna make the assumption Brian reach out to the you know the community resource. Um, they just had a that person is there's a turnover there, but we have a new one and go from there. Okay, and Keith, do you know yet the say the parade route for next year? Um, I if it's going to go back more of the traditional type route, what we were looking at before was somewhere along the starting area. It was either going to be like Claverick Road or the Congregational Church and was going to go through the center of town and and end at the intersection of Long Plain and Christian Lane. Okay. So... That is part of it, I, I guess, is an option. They could do that after our parade if, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I have no idea what their time time frame is on this happening is. Um, the only thing that I was told the reason for this to happen was they need to get more power down to um, the farms on the south end of town for the marijuana operations so um i would say i would assume that the, you're going to have those businesses are going to be um very upset if they can't get the upgrades made to meet their timelines also so that's another factor that you have to to deal with but um and i don't think the way the requirements are for them to go and put just put a new poll next to the old one. I don't think they need to come to the board for that. I could be wrong, but I don't think they need to because they don't consider it a new poll set. It's not a new location. Okay, but what about guide wires? Are they on all on town property or they go on private as well? That I, they have some of both. And when they have um, them on private property, you know, if they've already have one established on private property and they already have uh, um, permission to do it, and all they're doing is, in their mind, is taking the old one out and replacing it with a new one, I don't think they need to get permission again. Okay. Okay, so, so what's the agenda item here? I mean, are we just talking about it or what do we need to do? I guess I would I would recommend that Brian reach out to Eversource to get them come to a future meeting and tell us what they plan on doing and then tell them our concerns. Should Verizon come to that meeting too, Keith? If you can get somebody, that would be more beneficial. Let's try that. Traffic both. And what... Keith, what, what success have you had of getting them to remove the old poles? Is that? It usually comes down to when they want a new set and you say not until you get the old ones cleaned up. It seems to be about the only um, stronghold you have. Do we have that now? Well, I don't know if they, it's been some time since they've come looking for a new polls since they've done all their um, voltage regulators, you know, where they put those three poles all together, where, they, where they've where they done that, that's the last time they've actually asked for any new poll sets. Okay. And that's the same ones that are still there today. Okay. So at an upcoming meeting, Brian? Brian? Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, moving on, uh, 
uh, new business, accept the resignation of Bill Skrotsky from the Tritown Beach Commission. I move that we accept his resignation. Second. Okay, so is there, a, how many other members are there are on the committee? Commission. Two. It's two from Waitley, right? It's also, Deerfield is part of it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, we'll call a vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred, yes. Okay, town administrator updates. Oh, these are gonna be long. Oh, you're, you're, <laughs> I'm just wow, kidding. Good, good, good. You're I know you guys nice. have been waving. Thanks for sticking around the whole meeting. Um, I'll keep them short. Uh, complete streets grant. Um, that was submitted. I included the application in the meeting material. Um, we actually had less money than we thought we would, uh, because they imposed a, a three year rolling cap on uh, the amount of uh, money you could have. Really, the only change that 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 we made was we didn't include the section of sidewalk from the church down to the 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 new uh, Whitley Center Woods because um, we needed to fit um, the project within the hundred ninety thousand. Um, we had good news, Mass DOT. Um, I think the, the board was on the email from Natalie Blay that that Mass DOT has agreed to pay 100% of the design costs for Haydenville Road. We, we had previously talked about, a, I don't even remember, 87-13 split or 85-15 split or something like that. Uh, but Mass DOT has said they're gonna cover those design costs. Um, COVID vaccine clinic, I think it's still scheduled for May 16th at Treehouse. Um, as far as I know, I believe there's still um, there's still availability there. It's for the Johnson and Johnson uh, one shot. Um, so um, you can look, uh, go to the website for, for instructions on that. Um, the other stuff we can, we can talk about the, the meeting room AV stuff. Um, I think at a future meeting, it, Joyce and I and Amy have had conversations about um, some of our needs there as we move forward in some type of, probably hybrid in person and remote. Um, we've been working with a consultant from Wasp, uh, Waspens down on State Road. Um, and then last week, the filming at the Whitley Diner and the flaring operations at Berkshire Gas were completed. Um, I don't, I'll need to forward you an email from um, from the people from Showtime. They were, um, they had very nice things to say about the department heads that, that helped them there. They had nice, nice things to say about Jim and Don, about Chief Hannum, about Keith and Wayne and how they were all very helpful. So um, I'll forward that along, but um, they should all get an attaboy. Yeah, I get a, get a huge bonus. I'm sending out the love here on the uh, emojis. Give them 2%. We can, we can really feel that love coming through. Okay. Um, and, that, and that's all that I have, but um, they were it went very well. Um, and I think that it, it went very well. We should come back. Okay. Brian, okay. just looking at is, is there a budget meeting next week? And is that with, with whom? Um, there's not, I don't think there's anything scheduled yet. I think their next meeting was, well, I'll let you know exactly when it is, but I think it might have been the 25th. I've got one on my calendar. FinCom with BOS on the 18th of May. Is that was that moved? That was the tentative. Um, oh, that was a tentative one. Okay. Yeah. So there um, is not one next week. I don't believe so. I'll clarify. I'll clarify that. Okay. It, it okay. Be soon because doesn't town meeting happen pretty soon? Uh, June 15th. Right, and it's two weeks, so you know. So we got okay. So sometime in the next two weeks, there will be a joint select board finance committee meeting, right? Um, yeah, there should be. Okay. All right. And I, the 18th is already blocked off on my schedule. I'm just saying. All right. So okay. we need to approve warrant articles at our next meeting then on the 26th. Um, yes, there will be, there will be a, a draft warrant that will go out before that meeting. 
Okay, well, Ellen gives us a day before if we're meeting on the 25th, right? To make changes if we want. Yep. Okay. But from 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 my from my take on this meeting and from the finance committee meeting is really the only thing that 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 the boards may differ on are the is the uh, driveway. The driveway, yeah. Okay. If I'm if I'm misreading the the situation, then no, I think you got it. Okay. Okay. It would be it would be good to know sooner rather than later. Let's put it that way. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay. We're adjourned until uh, May 26th. Thank you. And you need us to come by for signatures on things tomorrow? I, I, I feel like there was some... If I don't write it down, I'm not going to come by and sign. Oh, I didn't know that we needed to do that. Do we need to was do there, that? Is there things for signatures? Um, is the letter to the uh, folks on Poplar Hill Road, or you mean Dickinson Dickinson Hill. Hill. I'll Dickinson email you. Hill. Email me. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, yeah. you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And the proclamation for the twenty sixth.